Hey, I'm back with part two of my series, Pride, Forever Fallen or Saved by God's Grace. And the title of this episode, if you will, is going to be called, Why the Sixth Month? Have you ever asked yourself why the LGBT community celebrate pride during the sixth month? Like, what is it about the sixth month when they're, you know, January, February, March, April, May, July, August, September, October, November, December. What about the sixth month? made this community want to celebrate love is love and pride. Let's get into it. Genesis 126 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle of all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. That word man, the Hebrew word for it is Adam. It means man, mankind, Adam, which was the first man. Man was created on the sixth day. Adam was the first man and God gave him specific instructions on not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when Adam ate of the forbidden fruit, it caused the fall of man, curses and sin to enter into the world. Pride will be the fall of man, hence the scripture, pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. Because men were created on the sixth day, men represent flesh. Six represents fall of men, flesh of men, sin, weakness of men, evil of Satan, manifestation of sin. So anytime you see that number, it represents nothing good. Even in Revelation, 666 means the mark of the beast. So why did God allow me to see a rainbow on the fifth day of the sixth month? Because the entire community, the entire LGBTQ plus community needs to be reminded who the rainbow belongs to. And also because people within the community need grace to come out of their lifestyle. They also need grace to come out of the perverted covenant made with the devil and what they feel represents the rainbow. So why do they celebrate pride or love is love in the sixth month? is because the number six represents sin, it represents flesh, it represents the devil. So I pose this question to you all again. Will you be forever fallen or will you be saved by God's grace? Until next time. So I decided to go ahead and compile part two and part three together. So this is actually part three. And I decided to compile them together because you need to know the origin of the rainbow. So in Genesis 9, um, verse 12 through 13, it states, And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. God was talking to Noah. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. That word my there means belonging to or associated with the speaker. The rainbow belongs to the Lord. 
it belongs to the Lord. God has taken ownership of something that he created to give to give man or to give Noah as a sign of this is me establishing my covenant with you. So the rainbow belongs to the Lord and not to the enemy who tried to pervert the rainbow to a specific group or community for it to represent love is love and pride. I will be back with part four. But again, I pose this question to you. Will you be forever fallen or will you be saved by God's grace? Until next time.